Secret of the Shark Pit by Lee Roddy. Chapter 2. The Mystery Deepens. What are you talking about? Josh demanded of his little brother. Yes, Tiffany added emphatically, standing under the family picture gallery in the hallway. Talk sense. It's true, Nathan insisted, waving the sandwich toward the kitchen. We're going to Hawaii. Ask Mom. The two older lad children rushed into the kitchen, but their mother was still on the phone and waved them back to silence. She was a tall, slender woman with very black hair and a dimple in her left cheek. "'Well, Barbara,' Mrs. Lyde said into the phone, "'you know as much about it as I do. We'd better hang up while I get the whole story from John. We'll call you back tonight so he can talk to Sam.' After she hung up, all three lad kids peppered her with questions, but she shook her head and headed for the door into the dining room. "'It's just as much a surprise to me as it is to you,' she said. "'Let's ask your father.' Mrs. Lyde burst through the living room door into the dining room. He grinned broadly and swept his wife into his arms. "'Sorry to spring the news on you like that, Mary, but as long as Barbara was on the phone, I figured I'd better tell her.' "'Tell her what?' Josh cried. "'Yes,' Tiffany echoed. "'What's going on?' Mrs. Lyde kept his wife, Mr. Lyde, kept his wife in the crook of his left arm and scooped the three children close to his, with his free arm. Two great pieces of news. First, you remember that article I wrote for the National Historical Journal a couple of months ago?' There was an answering chorus. Yes, John Ladd had supplemented his teacher's income with freelance writing, as long as Josh could remember. Well, the editor liked it so much that he asked me to come downtown and talk to him personally. Then he gave me a major assignment. Josh wanted to ask, father, ask his father to get to the part about Hawaii. And, he prompted. Mr. Ladd paused dramatically, as he did some, sometimes did, quickly looking from one member of his family to another. Then he grinned and explained, the editor is not only going to pay well for the article, but is also paying my expenses to Hawaii. Can we go too? Josh asked breathlessly, thinking of being with Tank again. Well, the cost of my plane ticket will be covered by the journal. I've got enough total mileage from my frequent flyer program for two free round trip tickets. That covers three of us, and I think we can afford to take the other two of you along. The three children erupted in joyous shouts. Josh could hardly believe it. To see Tank again! to find out what his wh he whispered about on the phone. When they had calmed down a little, Tiffany asked, Dad, what's the second piece of news? Mr. Ladd looked happy. Mr. Ladd's happy look vanished. He leaned forward silently. You must all promise me one thing. What's that? Everyone asked together. Will you promise? Their father agreed, glancing at each one. The three kids nodded solemnly. Mr. Ladd s said seriously, you may tell your friends we're going to Hawaii for vacation, but you can't mention what that I'm on an article assignment. Why not? Tiffany demanded, absently opening a cupboard and making taking out a box of cookies. Sometimes she was awfully bossy and not very careful how she th asked things, even of grown-ups. Her mother reached over and took the package. If your father asks you to do something, that should be enough, and no snack this close to dinner. But Nathan had a sandwich. Only because I was on the phone and didn't see him get it, Tiffany. Josh moaned. Aw, oh, come on. I want to hear more about going to Hawaii. Nathan turned toward the hallway door. Not me. I'm going to pack right now. Mr. Lad chuckled. You don't need to do that just yet. We can't go until school's out in two weeks. Remember, you can tell your friends we're going to Hawaii, but don't say anything about my assignment. Mrs. Lad suggested. Why don't all of you go to your rooms and make lists of what you're going to pack? While you're at it, please straighten your rooms, too. She added with a smile. I'm getting afraid to go into some of them without first getting a tetanus shot. Josh almost floated to his room. I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to see Tank. Josh was so excited his breathing became painful. He glanced out of the window at the smoggy sky and thought, It won't be long until I don't have to breathe this stuff. I'll be in Hawaii with Tank again. Then I can find out what's so secret. He couldn't tell me or write me. At dinner, all the talk was about plans for the trip. There was so much excitement that it wasn't until Josh was preparing for bed that he thought, Why would Dad not want us to say anything about his assignment? Josh suddenly remembered the stranger. In his pajamas and robe, Josh padded down to the little den where his father was correcting papers. Mr. Ladd peered at his son over the top of his new silver-rimmed glass half-glasses. The glasses looked strange to the boy. Dad, you got a minute? I've always, I always have time for my children, Mr. Ladd said. He laid down his pencil, removed his half-glasses, and leaned back in his chair. What's on your mind, son? Well, Josh said slowly, easing back, easing onto the edge of the straight-back chair beside the small desk. 
There was a stranger, he added, he began, and then proceeded to tell the whole story. Dad, could that man have anything to do with the assignment the man magazine gave you? He concluded. Mr. Lodd was thoughtfully silent for a long time before answering. Maybe, but I really don't know, son. Who could he be, Dad? I don't know that either. Now tell me about the picture the stranger dropped. I only got a glimpse, Josh explained, and then he briefly described the color photograph. I think what I saw were cliffs, he said. Suddenly, Mr. Ladd stepped forward and gripped his son's arm. Cliffs, you said? What kind? I don't know, just cliffs. Not very big, but full of... holes, maybe. Holes? Could they have been lava tubes? I don't know what those are. Did you notice anything about the top of the cliffs? They were like these dome-type things, Josh said. I've got... I've seen something like them on those nature shows we get on ed on the educational channel. Sort of like termite hills in Africa. Mr. Ladd released Josh's arm and spun to face his briefcase. He worked the double combination locks and, and raised the lid. Josh got a pleasant whiff of leather. Mr. Ladd reached in and picked up a picture. He held it out to toward Josh. Did the stranger's photo look anything like this? The boy stared and then excitedly grabbed the picture for a closer look. That's it. It's the same place, Dad. Mr. Ladd said softly, The shark pit. The what? So someone else does know. Dad, what did you say about a shark... Shh, Mr. Ladd interrupted. Not another word. He retrieved the picture and re replaced it in his briefcase. Now, please go back to bed and forget about this. Josh felt frustrated as he moved reluctantly toward his bedroom. He muttered to himself, How can I possibly forget about it? What's going on anyway? No answers came. Instead, he felt a kind of rising excitement and a sense of danger he couldn't explain. That danger was heightened when the Ladd family returned from Sunday night church services that weekend. When Josh entered their home, he found the sliding glass door to the patio had been broken. He ran yelling to his parents in the living room. Dad! Mom! Somebody's broken in! We've been robbed! The family dashed to see the broken patio door. Quickly, Mr. Ladd said. Check every room! It took only a few minutes to find that the entire house had been thoroughly ransacked. Mr. Ladd said, I'll call the police. While we wait for them to arrive, go back to through your rooms and see what's missing. Josh realized that it, what a terrible feeling it was to know that somebody had been inside your room, opening drawers, throwing things on the floor, and breaking airplane and ship models he and his father had made together. Tiffany and Nathan's rooms were also ransacked, but their parents' master bedroom and Mr. Ladd's little study had suffered the most. There were disasters. Every closet and drawer had been opened and the contents dumped on the carpet. Papers and books were scattered everywhere. By the time two uniformed police officers arrived, the five Ladd family members had all agreed, as far as they could determine, nothing was missing. The officers took statements and asked questions about possible subs suspects or motives. Mr. Ladd shook his head and shrugged, but Josh thought of something. Dad, what about the stranger? Mr. Ladd frowned and then nodded. It doesn't seem likely, but... Well, perhaps you should tell them, Josh. The boy complied, feeling scared. When he had finished, the one officer suggested that Josh go down to the police station and look at some at mug books to see if he could recognize the stranger. Josh said he didn't think it would do any good because the stranger had worn dark wrap round sunglasses. When the police officers had gone, Josh walked out in the backyard with his father. The night was unusually chilly for Los Angeles, and Josh felt goosebumps rise on his arms and neck. Dad, since nothing seems to be missing, do you think the burglar re burglar will return? The officers didn't think so. You didn't tell them anything about the shark pit. Do you suppose the stranger already has the photo, so that's not what he has a he was after? Could he have been after something else? Mr. Ladd blinked and looked down at his son. You know, I hadn't thought of that. Thought of what? If it was the stranger that burglarized us, what else could he have been looking for? So you have something else we might he might have wanted? Slowly Mr. N Ladd nodded. But if that's it, he won't find it here. In my car or my classroom. Find what? Sorry, Josh, I can't tell you. Why not? Several reasons, son. Is it a map? Mr. Ladd seemed startled. A map? Like, maybe to the, uh, to the place I saw in your picture in Strangers. The shark pit. Please, don't say those words aloud. Where's the map, Dad? I didn't say it was a map. But whatever it is, you'll have to take it with you to Hawaii, won't you? Yes, of course. Could the burglar try to take it then? Mr. Ladd laughed. On a plane filled with about 500 passengers? No, son, I don't think so. He placed his arm around Josh's shoulder and smiled down at him in a fatherly way. Now you try to put this out of your mind. Concentrate on finishing the school year, because nothing is more 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 important is going to happen. He was wrong. 
Two nights later, Mr. Ladd came home from school with upsetting news. My classroom was broken into last night, he said grimly. Oh, no, John, Mrs. Ladd exclaimed. He nodded. Nothing was missing, however, and damage was minimal. Why would anybody break into a history classroom? There's nothing to steal. Dad, do you think it was the same guy who broke into our house? Josh asked thoughtfully. Mr. Ladd looked searchingly at his son before answering. The police suspect juveniles, but it didn't look like that type of vandalism to me. It wasn't the same as what I've seen in other teachers' classes. Though Josh was troubled by the break-ins and the growing mystery, he tried to fill his mind with thoughts of school ending, visiting Hawaii, and seeing Tank again. He could hardly wait. Josh had just hoped he could leave behind the uneasy feelings when they arrived in Hawaii. At last, school was out for the summer, and the Ladd family was aboard the giant four-engine jet plane. Josh was so excited that it seemed the nearly five-hour flight would never end. But before he knew it, the plane eased down past the volcanic landmark called Diamond Head, and delighted passengers strained to see out of the little oval windows. The plane then swung low over the beautiful blue-green Pacific Ocean, with its majestic white cap waves rolling toward shore. The landing was smooth at Honolulu, the capital of the 50th state. "'We're here!' Josh cried, unbuckling his seatbelt. "'I can hardly wait to see Tank again!' Josh was secretly scared that his allergy would act up when the cabin door opened and he took his first breath of Hawaiian air. If that happened, he'd made up his mind and to pretend he was fine so nothing would mess up his plans to be with Tank. It seemed there were hundreds of people getting off ahead of the Ladd family, but at last they stopped at the open door. Josh glanced out at the outdoor upper-level concrete concourse. The f first soft, warm touch of the famous trade winds caressed his cheek. He automatically took a deep breath and glanced around. To his left, beyond the terminal building, lush green mountains rose immediately behind the city. Josh had studied enough in preparation for coming that he knew th those were called the Kulao Range. The sky was the bluest and clearest Josh had seen in years, but it was the air that made Josh cry out. Hey, I can breathe, he excitedly told his family. He again filled his lungs full of air. I can breathe, he repeated. Good for you, Tiffany said. Now can I get off so I can find Marsha? The Ladd family left the plane and followed in a human river of debarking passengers toward the terminal. The warm sun and pleasant trade winds caused everybody to hastily remove their coats. Josh tried to rush ahead, but the crowd was too densely packed. He let himself be carried with the others into the glass-walled terminal. Above the hubbub of voices, Josh caught the smell of flowers and something sweet, like pineapple. He heard Hawaiian music musicians playing ukuleles and saw young, colorfully dressed, brown-skinned men and women rushing forward with bright flower lays to greet some passengers. "'There they are!' Mr. Ladd cried, pointing over the crowd. Josh saw the Catlett family push, pushing forward with several pretty flower, pretty flower lays draped over their left arms. "'Aloha!' Mr. Catlett cried, easing through the crowd. He was as slender as a golf club. Josh had studied enough of Hawaii to recognize that Tank's father wore a white aloha shirt with a red hibiscus design. His pants were white. His pretty wife had on a long blue muumuu. Marsha wore a pale green shorts and tank top. She was shorter than Tiffany, although both girls were nearly the same age. The four adults met with glad cries, handshakes, and hugs. The catlets slipped lays over Mr. and Mrs. Ladd's heads, then over Tiffany and, and Martha and Nathan. Tiffany and Nathan's. Josh was last. Tank's mother threw a fragrant, slightly damp, purple and white lay around his neck. He was embarrassed when she kissed him on the cheek and cried, Aloha! Welcome to our island! Mr. Catlett and Marsha also eased lays over Josh's head, but he barely noticed. His eyes were on Tank, who had held back until all the lads had flowers piled up to their chins. Then Tank stepped forward, gently removing a fragrant plumeria lay from his tanned left arm. Hi, Tank said, slipping the garland over Josh's head. Boy, am I glad to see you! It was the fastest sentence Josh had ever heard him, his, from his slow-talking friend. Tank's straight blonde hair was bleached almost white from the sun. He wore a loose-fitting yellow and red aloha shirt, matching shorts and sandals. Me too, Josh said, wiping a drop of water off his chin from the lace. Josh was big for his age, but Tank was bigger. At twelve, he was taller, broader in the shoulders, and heavier by ten pounds but, than Josh. Both boys' arms and shoulders were showed unusual development from a lifetime of swimming. The two friends grinned and made small talk until the bags were loaded, and the family settled into the Catlett's station wagon. 
As the boys crawled into the very back end with the bags, Tank asked, Did the doctor let you swim yet? Yes, as long as I feel okay. He wouldn't let me for a couple of months after my last allergy attack, but I'm okay now. Tank leaned closer and whispered, I'm glad, because you'll never believe where we're going. Yeah, where? Josh asked, automatically whispering back as he remembered the secret Tank had mentioned on the phone. Can't tell you here. Wait till we're alone. But you're going to love it. As the station wagon pulled away from the curb, out of the corner of Josh's eye, saw a man run from the terminal. Josh turned his head in time to see the well-dressed man push past the other people waiting for a cab at the curb. The man threw his bags into the cab's back seat and pointed toward the Cal station wagon. Then the man jumped into the back cab's back seat. It pulled away from the curb. Uh-oh, Josh whispered to Tank. What? his friend demanded. It's him. Who are you talking about? The stranger! He's followed us to Hawaii!